what are my thoughts on billionaires like Bill Gates trying to aggressively uh, promote GMOs and hybrid seeds in nations and the controversy of Facebook selling information to Cambridge Analytica? Is there any possibility that there, be that there would be a time when such powerful people would control major interests of nations? Good question. So what is a GMO? A GMO is a genetically modified organism. So once again, this is about gene editing. It's about artificially changing certain genes in, let's say, plants, in seeds, and creating a new kind of, a new breed, a new species of, of uh, plant. For example, there's something called golden rice. So it's a new kind of rice that's been genetically engineered, in it, and it supposedly provides a great deal of vitamin D. So you don't need to go out in the sun. You can just sit at home, eat the golden rice, and you will get the vitamin D that you need. So that is one example of a GMO. Then you have these genetically modified mosquitoes that will breed with regular mosquitoes and render, render them ineffective or something like that. So, so there are experiments in which such genetically modified mosquitoes have been released in the wild. And so that is what GMOs is. It's mostly to do with food crops, modified food crops that will be more tolerant to drought, that will need less water, that will be more tolerant to pests and other uh, funguses and their, those things, diseases, plant diseases. So it is all about solving the food problems of the world. So there are some, so some companies and organizations are genetically modifying food crops to, uh, to increase the yields and all that. Right now, the question is once again the same: Do we understand the long-term effects of, of modifying and editing genes? If we introduce a new kind of gene inside an organism, it has a great deal of DNA that we don't understand, and this DNA interacts with each other, and we don't understand what happens and what effects it has. So this and and the other thing is that we don't know what edits they are doing in the in the in the genes of this organism. They may be adding or editing certain genes that we don't know about, right? For, for certain purposes that we are not aware of. So the question is, can we trust these people? Can we trust these organizations and these, these powerful corporations and these so-called philanthropists? What are they actually trying to achieve? What effect will it have on human beings who consume these genetically modified plants and seeds and hybrid uh, legumes and all that. We don't know. So it is a big concern. Firstly, we don't know the long-term effects of these gene ed of these edits in the genes. And secondly, we don't know if they are introducing certain certain things that we are not aware of for certain uh, agenda to, to serve certain agendas. So that is a big problem. And that's why I personally am against GMOs. We have, ha we have a great variety of food crops and all kinds of seeds that have existed for thousands of years. They have evolved over thousands of years. We have great varieties of rice, of potatoes, of wheat, of, of all kinds of other food, food uh, crops. So I would say that it is dangerous to create genetically modified organisms because we know what happens when you introduce new organisms in an environment where that organism doesn't belong. You have these uh, invasive species that destroy the local environment. Some people have introduced certain species of fish in certain lakes and rivers from, from far away, and they have wreaked havoc on the local ecosystem. And the same goes for invasive insect species, invasive reptiles and snakes. So. If you were to introduce new species that you have created artificially, it's going to have effects that we don't understand right now. So it's not a good idea, in my opinion, to do this without understanding fully what the long-term effects are. So that's about GMOs, uh, the controversy of Facebook selling information to Cambridge Analytica. It's about big data. See, big data, Facebook, Google, uh, Twitter, and the, and the like, they give us free services, right? We can access all these services for free. The thing is this, when the service is free, you are the product. You are the product they're selling. So Facebook runs ads. The, the customer, the, the user of Facebook is the product, right? 
So that's how Facebook makes money by selling the customers eyeballs and, and, and attention to advertisers. The same goes for Google and YouTube and Instagram and Twitter and all that. So and it's not just that there's a great deal of other data that is collected metadata that is in a way very intrusive. So when so this information is very valuable data is the new oil. So that is what was this entire controversy about Facebook selling information to Cambridge Analytica without informing users. And it has a great deal of applications. You can change governments. You can change the opinions of people by selective targeting, right? You can trend certain hashtags, trend certain news stories, which may be true or false. And you can influence people's opinions, people's moods, and, and, and much more. So you can so you can artificially engineer entire societies, entire countries by by the means of manipulating the data. And that's what big data is all about. Now, companies like Facebook, Google, Twitter, etc., they transcend national boundaries, right? They come into your, your country, your sovereign country, and then they tell you how to behave, they tell you the rules, they impose rules upon you, which they can arbitrarily change, they can block people, they can ban people, they can prevent you from saying certain things, they can prevent certain political opinions from being aired, certain religious opinions from being aired, and they can, by doing all this, control the entire society. So that is one of the main issues of big data. It, it essentially is making national sovereignty increasingly obsolete. And these big data companies, they now be they are in some ways more powerful than certain countries. And they are now trying to negotiate as if they are a sovereign entity of their own. So this is the same model that the East India companies used to great to, with great success. They came into India as a corporation, as a company. They wanted to trade. And as they gained more power, they gained more land. They started imposing their foreign laws on Indians, right? And eventually they took over the whole country. So this is the East India company company model, which all of these big data companies are, are currently using. It's the same model. It's used in a different way. It's all virtual now it's all online it's all about data but the effects are essentially the same and that, that's that's the that's the that's why it's such a big threat to the sovereignty of, of nations so that's about uh, Cambridge Analytica is there any possibility there will be a time when powerful people would control major interests of nations? yes like I just said these powerful people these powerful corporations are now becoming effectively more powerful than many nations. And yes, eventually everything will be privatized. Even countries may be privatized without the people knowing about it, especially if the politicians and the so-called leaders of these countries make deals with these corporations. In that case, the entire countries will, be, will become privatized and you will all become commodities. So that is the great danger right now. See, the United States we think of it as, a, as this great paradise, but it's a country, it's the most unequal country in the world, in a sense, because it's a very, very small fraction of the country's population that controls all the power and that controls more than two thirds of the money in the United States. So it's a great place if you're rich. It's a terrible place if you're poor. The poor in that country, they have to work three jobs, 18 hours a day just to put food on the plates, on the, on the tables of the family. And this inequality is, is increasing in the United States. It's, it's becoming like an oligarchy, right? So that is the model that is now being used to, it's now being exported to other countries and the tentacles of power are spreading worldwide because of artificial intelligence, because of big data. So that is the situation we are in right now. The world is changing very fast. The 2020s are going to be a decade of great change, of great geopolitical change, of great power shifts. Uh, China is pushing back. It has closed off its internet. It doesn't allow Google or any American company in. Russia is going is is doing that to a certain extent. And Russia and China have, have clearly declared that they do not believe in the Western system of values and, and international law and all that. They have their own way of looking at things. So they are pushing back at this system. 
So it's a it's a very interesting time. It's a time of great change. It's a time of great peril for for the ordinary people of the world. So let's see where it goes.